to date. This summer has seen six shark attacks off the coast of New York's Long Island. Swimmers have been bitten on their foot, their hands, butts, and one very unlucky gentleman was knocked off his paddleboard and bitten on the leg. Fortunately, none of these attacks were life-threatening. So what's going on here? Why are so many people getting chomped? And should you avoid swimming in the ocean if you live in this area, like I do? We should start off by noting that unprovoked shark attacks seem to be extremely rare when you think about the millions of people who swim in the ocean every year. According to a database maintained by the Florida Museum of Natural History, an average of 70 attacks are recorded each year. And that's worldwide. If these numbers are accurate, you have a much greater risk of dying from a lightning strike than from a shark attack. But knowing that context makes six attacks in the space of a couple weeks seem even more unusual. What's more, Long Island is not known for shark attacks. Most years sees at most one, and more often than not, there aren't any attacks in a given year. If there's any U.S. state known for shark attacks, it's actually Florida, which averages 25 every year. Local shark experts attribute the sudden rise in attacks to several main factors. One, conservation efforts are paying off. Sharks, along with other large ocean-going species like whales and dolphins, are making more frequent appearances in the New York area. Overfishing, pollution, and the desire to kill sharks, inspired by movies like Jaws, reduced the number of sharks through the latter half of the 20th century. But starting in the 1970s, several important laws have been passed to protect sharks and other sea life, including the Shark Conservation Act of 2011, which prohibits the barbarous practice of shark finning. In the U.S., it is currently illegal to hunt 19 Atlantic shark species, including white sharks and tiger sharks, which, along with bull sharks, are the big three implicated in attacks. The second factor is the Atlantic Ocean is warming up. Since the 1970s, the Atlantic has been getting steadily warmer. This has expanded the range of some shark species northward. For example, the sand tiger shark feels comfortable in water that is 72 degrees Fahrenheit and will migrate to wherever it can find that ideal temperature. And these days, the waters off the coast of Long Island seem to be just right for sand tigers. So much so that in 2016, researchers with the World Conservation Society discovered Long Island's Great South Bay, which runs between Fire Island and the mainland, has become a tiger shark breeding ground. The third factor is that food is plentiful. Sharks have made a comeback, and so has one of their important food sources, the Atlantic menhaden, also known as a bunker fish. Frank Quevedo, executive director of the South Fork Natural History Museum Shark Research and Education Program, told the New York Post, if there's a school of menhaden close to the shore and sharks are feeding on that, they're gonna fight any way they can or shove other fish out of the way to feed on that food source. So if people are in the middle of that frenzy, they're gonna get bitten and that's what happens. The Menhaden fishery had all but collapsed around the early 2010s, but better management has led to increasing numbers. And a law passed three years ago by New York State barred the practice of using large industrial nets, known as purse signs, to catch the bait fish. So it's likely that the population of Menhaden will grow even more, and along with it, more sharks. So things are looking up if you're a shark living around Long Island. Humans aren't allowed to kill you, food is plentiful, and you're cruising around in balmy ocean waters. If you're a human in those waters, the news is less good because now you're sharing the space with a bunch of quick, stealthy animals with very sharp teeth, and they're chasing after one of their favorite things to eat. So I'll leave it to you whether you wanna take the risk of swimming in the same water occupied by sharks. Just remember that the risk of getting bitten is still quite low, and you can further reduce that risk by following some tips from the Florida Natural History Museum. One, swim with a buddy. Sharks tend to approach people who are alone. Two, avoid being in the water during dawn or dusk and at nighttime when sharks are most active in feeding. Number three, don't enter the water if you are bleeding. Sharks are attracted to the smell of blood, as if you didn't already know that. And number four, swim where lifeguards can see you and avoid areas where people are fishing. 
For a more complete list of tips, you can visit the Florida Natural History Museum's website or check out the link in the description below. I'm Eric Olson, and that's your microdose of science. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more great science-centric content.